The current river is one of the Missouri Ozarks most popular float streams, featuring bluffs, caves, springs, clear water, and a lot of biodiversity. Its rapid current usually means a one-way trip, and the need for a shuttle service. But the new Current River Challenge, a collaboration between Missouri State Parks and the National Park Service, creates a self-contained hike-float loop along the river. This loop is a great way to appreciate the geology and biology of the region, so follow along as we share some highlights from a September visit. The challenge starts and ends at the Round Spring Canoe Landing within the Ozark National Scenic Riverways. From here, an 8-mile hike takes you through the hills to Current River State Park, from which it's a 4-mile float back down to Round Spring. We stashed our canoe at Current River State Park before setting out, locking it to a tree with a bike cable, and making sure to leave our paddles and life jackets there as well. The park reports no issues with thefts or other disturbances. With that done, we made the short drive back down to Round Spring and hit the trail. The well-built trail climbs into beautiful woodlands full of opportunities to look for interesting plants and wildlife. But what are the rocks you see along the trail, and how are they shaping the landscape that you're hiking through? This part of the current river is primarily underlain by three distinct geologic formations, generally flat and stacked one on top of the other like a layer cake. Two of these are dolomite, a carbonate rock similar to limestone, and are each well over 100 feet thick. They're separated by a distinct layer of sandstone 10 to 20 feet thick. But where do these occur? Unlike a topographic map which shows the shape of the landscape, a geologic map shows which rock formations appear at the surface of that landscape. Let's see what this shows us for the challenge region. The eminence dolomite appears only along river valleys. This makes sense since it's the lowest unit in the sequence here so the rivers have to cut down to reach it. This is what forms all the outcrops along the river. Most of the uplands consist of the Gasconade dolomite, which again makes sense since it's above the others. You won't see as much of this except a few outcrops at higher elevations, or maybe on a few especially high bluffs. Where they meet, you might find outcrops of the Gunter sandstone running parallel to the slope. And indeed, as you hike along the trail, you'll often find distinct sandstone ledges partway up the slope. It isn't always certain that every bit of sandstone is the Gunter, because there are smaller lenses of sandstone elsewhere in the dolomites but it's a pattern to look for. The Gunter plays an interesting, and somewhat surprising, role in determining where caves and springs develop, but we'll come back to that. Meanwhile, the trail passes through a variety of habitats, including rich, mature forests of hardwoods with patches of shortleaf pines, as well as small open glades situated on dolomite. Through the hike, we saw an assortment of colorful mushrooms. And these are just a few examples of the multiple species of ferns we observed on the hike, with yet more species on the bluffs and rocks along the river. When we hiked this trail in September, it was long past spring wildflower season, but there was plenty of evidence, such as these hepatica leaves, to suggest that this would be a wonderful spring hike, say in March through May. September is a good time to see flowers such as asters and goldenrods. This is the first time I've encountered Buckley's goldenrod, and I appreciate the users of iNaturalist who assisted with identification. And I was super excited to see the seed stalk on this wood sponge flower, which is also known as false hellbore, because the presence of green seed pods indicated that it was a bloom year for this plant. And this is a species that only blooms sporadically, perhaps once out of every five or more years, for reasons that aren't fully understood. At Trails End in Current River State Park, we retrieved our canoe and hit the water. At this time of year, the river bluffs are dripping with flowers, like these orange cone flowers and blue lobelia. Our canoe sometimes zigzagged from bluff to bluff, not because we'd emptied a beer cooler, but because there were so many cool plants to look at. While I was studying some of these close up, a yelp came from the back of the canoe, indicating that a palm-sized fishing spider had dropped into Eric's lap from the overhanging rock. Two particularly showy plants in bloom during September are cardinal flower and blue lobelia. These are closely related, both in the genus Lobelia. We generally saw cardinal flower growing on gravel bars and blue lobelia on bluffs. On occasion, pollen from one species finds its way to the other, resulting in a rare natural hybrid with a stunning magenta color. For some reason, these are most often found along the spring-fed rivers of the Ozarks, including the Current, Jack's Fork, and Eleven Point Rivers. We technically didn't see this hybrid on the Current River Challenge segment of river, but rather on a float trip a bit farther upstream. A keen eye could reveal one down here too, though, and they are definitely worth looking for. 
Returning to the geology, recall that the eminence dolomite is the rock found all along the river in this stretch, because it's the lowest in the sequence here. Caves and springs are particularly common in this formation, which seems quite prone to being dissolved away by water and can often look like Swiss cheese, or in this case a skull. But research suggests another factor, the presence of sandstone layers. Groundwater under pressure rises, dissolving the bedrock along the way to form cave systems. Where that movement intersects with an opening to the surface, you get a spring. But the distribution of such caves and conduits isn't random. Almost all caves in this area occur just below sandstone layers. This seems to happen for both physical and chemical reasons. While sandstone sounds like it would be porous, in this area it's actually more resistant to water movement than the incredibly porous dolomite around it. So when upward moving groundwater hits one of these sandstone layers, it deflects and moves sideways, tending to create conduits, caves, and springs just below the sandstone. In addition, being forced up against the sandstone seems to raise the water pressure, which can lower the pH, making it more acidic, and thus more likely to dissolve the dolomite, again concentrating caves and springs just below sandstone layers. So as you're hiking and paddling, pay attention to the geology and appreciate how it shapes everything from the landscape to the ecology of this lovely loop trip. You might even find something like an otter's den, or holt, nestled under an eroded dolomite overhang, like this one we found on a different float. Be sure to stop by Round Spring itself when you're done, and appreciate the unique plant community supported by the average 26 million gallons of water flowing out every day. The parks encourage you not to do this all in one day. But to us, the single day loop was what made it special. In fairness, having worked for the National Park Service, I've seen firsthand how disruptive and even scary it can be when someone gets in over their heads outdoors and has to be responded to. You should make a sensible decision based on your own outdoors experience and fitness level. For context, we staged our canoe around 8 a.m., were on the trail by 9 a.m., launched the canoe around 2 p.m., and were off the river by 5. And although we're strong hikers and canoeists, we were also doing quite a bit of botanizing and geologizing, took several lazy breaks just to enjoy the setting, and mostly drifted the four miles downriver. We do recommend buying a copy of the Ozark Trail Association's official map for this portion of the trail system, which is well done and useful. Plus, buying it supports a worthy organization. The current river challenge is a great way to combine hiking and paddling in the deep Ozarks without any outside help, and we strongly recommend it. You can easily tack on a longer float another day to reach different features of the current river, take other hikes on connecting trails to extend your enjoyment of the landscape, and visit other large springs and historical sites in the region. But we had a great time doing the loop on our own, and we hope you will too.